welcome back everyone to Art a la carte. This video is kind of a continuation of a video I did previously on how to draw a water dragon. And so if you didn't see this that video, um, I'll put a link right here and you can go check that video out to see how this water dragon got created. So this picture here, I'm actually going to color it with colored pencils and maybe a little bit of watercolor paint um, to kind of bring out some tones. Um, but first to let you know that this picture I drew, I drew on a really nice high quality drawing paper. But it's not watercolor paper or Bristol board, so I can't really do just straight watercolor on it. It will totally warp the whole paper and would ruin the piece. So that's one thing that you have to remember about when choosing what medium you want to color this, that you use the correct type of paper. I will be making a video talking about different types of paper um, and you know what they're good for and what they're definitely not good for. So putting a lot of water onto this paper, not gonna be good. But this paper has really nice texture, so it's going to really receive colored pencil very well. And I can use a little bit of watercolor on here as long as I keep my water minimum so it's not going to buckle my paper too much. Now as with any kind of artwork, adding something to it always tends to have the risk of ruining your piece. So my suggestion is, is if you have a nice camera, go ahead and take a couple photos of your piece. Um, that way if something happens to it and it gets ruined, you have a digital copy of it. Um, it may not be the original, but at least you can be able to print it off and try again, um, or at least have a memory of what it looked like before it was destroyed. I'm not planning on destroying this picture, but one never knows. So my tip for you is I always take a photo of my pictures just so that I always have a good record. So let's D to D. Boom. So I got some good pictures of my dragon, and I took more than one shot, just in case one happens to be blurry. Take you know, two or three different shots. Hey, look, there's my wolf. See, I take pictures of everything. There's my wolf again. There's some lips that I took a picture of. And there's a horse. <laughs> so you'll see a lot of the pictures that I do for my tutorials, I take pictures of. For one, it helps me make a nice thumbnail for you guys. Hey, Mr. Jackie, puppy. Oh, I haven't shown you that one. Okay, this is now turning into a Let's look at photos that Valerie took on her camera. Once you've taken enough photos of your picture to make sure you have it correctly archived, now it's time to decide the color scheme of what we want our dragon to look like. The theme of my dragon is a water dragon. So obviously I'm gonna stick with a lot of blues. But as you can see, um, in my design of my dragon, he's a very coiling dragon and coils a lot. And even though with the scales it really helps to tell the direction, this here kind of gets mixed up with this here, so you, it's kind of hard to tell that that wraps around to this. So I'm going to use my colors to help do that, I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm going to start off with very nice blue through here, and then as it starts to wrap around back this way, it's going to go purple and go into a deep purple. Um, with some nice blue fins back here. So probably I'll have some nice kind of purplish wings. Maybe we'll kind of play around with that decide. But I'm gonna definitely start with a nice blue right up here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pick out all my blue color pencils and have them all ready to go. Using color pencils is all about getting some nice layers in there. So I'm not gonna push really hard. I'm just going to just very lightly apply that color in there. And then as I go, I will start scrubbing in the color more and more and more. So I laid in my first layer of color and kind of kept it nice and light and then really lightened it out here because actually this is where I'm going to begin to blend in my purple because I really want to get some purples going in here. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that color in next. So I started laying in my color, but as I'm looking at it, if I cut the purple into here, only this amount of my dragon is gonna be blue, which means a lot of it is gonna be purple, and I want it predominantly to be blue. So this is where we have to begin to make some tough choices. I am going to change this from going into a gradient lightly into purple. I'm gonna have this go light into dark blue, dark, 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 and then gradient into purple down here to the very tip. Sometimes you just have to make tough calls and choices. So let's just do it. 
do it. Alright, so genius idea. I came up with this idea as I was going. This is the fun part about art. Is now I'm this changing. Now I'm going to make it light blue into dark blue into green and then into purple. Oh, I'm so excited. Those are my favorite color combinations, by the way. So I'm gonna take a nice green. Pull this green in right in here. And because I haven't scrubbed hard yet, I can still change these colors like this. This is the fun thing about controlling the pressure of your color pencil. And the other nice thing is because I was getting so dark that it was really covering up the detail of these scales. But if you look down here, because it's so light, that you're still able to see the detail of the scale work. Because I tell you, I just about gave myself carpal tunnel putting these scales in here, and I sure want to be able to see them and enjoy them. So. This way I can do that um, a little bit better. So it's just a win-win situation for us all. So I've got a good layer of my coloring down. So now I'm taking a really dark kind of indigo blue and I'm starting to now put some definition to the individual scales. And I'm adding just a little bit of shading on the underside of each scale. And it's kind of push them up a little bit and make them a little bit more defined. And this, yes, is an extremely time consuming process, but if you want a nice looking picture, time is one of the most important ingredients in a lot of paintings, drawings, just putting that effort in there to go the extra mile. Not that you can't just lay some paint down and it just poof into a really cool picture. That does happen on some rare occasions, but if you're doing a painting that has a lot of detail in it, that ingredient definitely is time. So there you go, you see just the little bit of work here just really makes these scales pop up. I'm gonna do something different with these scales back here. I'm using white ink to help pop those up a little bit. But with these here, I'm already having it such a light color anyway, that just going in here and just adding those colors just really brings it up. So if you're not totally certain about a color or something like this here, I'm not sure what I want to do with that yet. So I'm going to save it until I get more of it done and then see what I need to do to balance it out. Maybe I'll have a little bit of purple up here to help balance, bring some purple in. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to go back over with my ink after I'm done because you'll see that this white will actually white out a lot of that black. And I want to keep that contrast in there. But I want to smooth things out so I can blend a little bit better. white in there to kind of help smooth everything out. If you look at the mouth, it has this really cool blended effect. And I really want this kind of leathery blended effect, effect to be the same as on these fins here, here, and here, which is a lot of work. I have to decide, do I want to put that time in there? Yes, yes I do. Okay, so let's do this. Let's start with a smaller fin first. <laughs> so you'll see as I put my greenish blue in here, you can still see a little bit of the white of the paper. Um, and I could take my white and go in there and blend it with my white and that would get rid of actually the white spots but would also lighten my color. So what I'm gonna use instead is this pencil here which is a colorless blender. What it is is just like a color pencil but it has absolutely no pigment in it. So you can also use this if you wanted to as well. Sometimes I like the white better because it looks a little bit, it softens everything a little bit where this one just takes the color and pushes it down. 
you just have to kind of play around with your tools, see what you like, what works the best. So I'm going to very lightly apply in beginning color to that eye and to that eye, very lightly. Take my white color pencil and smear that in there, get it nice and solid in there. And then I'm going to take this color here and I'm just going to run it around the edges here. I'm going to start slowly bringing that gradient in, using less and less pressure as I get closer. And then take my white again and just with little circling motions, Blend that out. Blend. It's looking too well. And I'm going to get my indigo in there. Boom, just like so. And even take my black and just really scrub in some black in there. And I'll probably go over with my ink a little bit to really get it nice and black in there. shade it all in because I want the bottom ridge to catch a little bit of that light. And I'm not pushing really hard, I'm allowing some of the white of the paper to show through, being a little bit more reflectant on the scales. It's very important that you are not afraid of getting nice and dark where you need to because that's really going to pop things forward. We're going to tackle these wings here next. We're going to do what we did up here, we're going to do those down here. Seriously going to get carpal tunnel in this hand. Uh. So there are two things that are really important to um, know and understand. And, and apply to your drawing, whether it's color pencils or whatever medium. Uh, first is to have the correct amount of time to be able to achieve what you need. Uh, again, this dragon, though not a, a really large piece, is a lot of detail. This is, you know, a six plus hour drawing. A lot of time is, is put into this. So have that time, have that patience, um, perseverance to just see it through and not go, oh, I'm just going to do a quick one and call it good. Because you can really make some beautiful things if you put the time into it. And second is to know what your medium will do. Whether you're using paint or colored pencils or even computer generated art, knowing what your stuff can do and how to manipulate it. Um, and that just comes from practicing and playing around, grabbing scrap pieces of paper and just playing with colored pencils. Um, that's how you come to find out that if you use white over top of your color, it's going to give this really cool, milky, uh, blended underwater appearance. Whereas if you just use, or whether you use just your regular colorless blender, you're just going to get a really solid, bright color. It's not going to get that kind of milky wash. Um, and that just came from playing around with it, going, I wonder what happens if I do this? And having fun with it and not being afraid to make mistakes. So that's, that's my two tips with learning how to use colored pencils. I will be back in just a little bit with the finished piece and you guys don't have to wait through the hours that I'm going to have to wait. My poor hand is tired, but I will persevere. So, see in a few seconds for you, a few hours for me. Okay, bye. After several hours of coloring and layering and scales, I'm going to see scales in my dreams tonight. The picture is finally complete. Yes. Boom, right here. There it is. I love it. Ooh. Yeah, I think it turned out great. I love this piece. It just has a lot of fun, a 
layers and colors and things going on and but just with it being simply a dragon I mean there's no background there's no environment that it's in it's just boom just this dragon here definitely worth the time and effort so I think total start to finish I think this piece took me about six hours to complete so it was a pretty intensive piece uh, but well worth it I love it and I have been enjoying looking at it for a while but what I'm and I have but totally well worth it every single minute I have really enjoyed looking at this piece and it's just a fun piece to look at kind of had it propped up and been enjoying it for the last couple of days and yeah I love it but now is a chance for one of you guys to love it so you can go to my Etsy shop and check that piece out and maybe be able to bring it home to your family and thanks to those who have purchased my art that really helps me put food on my table and pay my rent so thank you I love that <laughs> now a special treat to my Facebook friends if you head over there I have a digital copy of the line art for this piece here that you can print out and color your own dragon normally I sell these as digital coloring pages but I'm gonna give this away to you guys for free so just head over to my Facebook page like the page find that picture in the albums and you can print it off and have Tons of fun coloring it, and you can make it any color you want. You can have a fire dragon, or moss dragon, or stone dragon, or water dragon, whatever you want. Have fun with that. Make sure to post pictures of your dragons in my Facebook page below, and so we can all see them. So until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.